the Super Bowl. Events like this and others like it bring out all the Christian truthers, ready with their pitchforks to hunt after all the occult, satanic, and Illuminati symbols. I myself am guilty because I too take a keen interest in decoding these events. For it's of no surprise, really, since these gatherings herald some of the most antichrist performances we've come to know. However, after watching several 2017 Super Bowl Illuminati symbolism decoded videos, I'm a little concerned that many bloggers are trying to force fit symbolism into her performance and are completely missing the most devilish aspect of it all. While Lady Gaga threw an occult hand gesture here and there, had the typical scantily dressed wardrobe and erotic dance moves, it was largely a very vanilla performance, considering how extreme her works usually are. So what is the big issue our community is missing here? Well, to fully understand what is at play here, we have to look at what happened before her performance, during her performance, and after it. Before Lady Gaga took the stage, we must be reminded that the false prophet Pope Francis appeared on the jumbo screens and preached a message of, quote, human solidarity. His speech was most definitely antichrist in nature, and you can click on the video at the bottom of the screen to see why. And so, already, we see the Super Bowl start to have very religious undertones. And then later, Lady Gaga takes the stage. As she points to the sky, she says, One nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Well, that's interesting. Because we're living in a time where major parties and highly visible individuals have removed the word God from their speeches. The DNC, Obama, Hillary, or removing in God we trust from our money and the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, isn't that refreshing then that Miss Gaga has brought God back to the Super Bowl along with her compadre, Pope Francis. Well, no, not really. Because as we've seen time and time again, from Lady Gaga's twisted artistic mind, practicing the satanic Abramovic method with Mariana Abramovic, engaging in bisexual relations, and other occult instances, she has conveniently molded God to conform to her rather than submit to him. By stating in her song so eloquently, I'm beautiful in my way, cause God makes no mistakes. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. And so herein lies the theme that is starting to be uncovered at this Super Bowl. Put religion back into the minds of people, but twist it in a fashion that misdirects people away from Christ. As I predicted in my March 2016 video, The End Times, Will Christians Turn on the Remnant Church? I said that a resurgence or renaissance within Christianity would resurface soon and that this movement would be hijacked by Satan. This Super Bowl symbolism is fitting perfectly with that suspicion. However, we have one last component to look at one in which will solidify my argument for you. And that is, what happened after Lady Gaga's performance? Well, news articles happened. Take a look at this Washington Post article entitled, The Provocative Faith of Lady Gaga. Here are just some of the key phrases. In an American context where the media equates religion with social conservatism, Lady Gaga represents a welcome non-fundamentalist Christianity. She is the closest pop culture version in values, if not tone, to her fellow Catholic, Pope Francis. Lady Gaga has also played the part of prophet. She publicly came out as bisexual and spoke at an LGBT rights march on the mall in 2009. 
Her prayer is the same as countless progressive Christians who recoil at the hypocritical judgment of fundamentalism, yet still seek to follow Jesus. She prays to an affirming God with expansive love, not a narrow-minded magician in the sky who damns non-believers to eternal conscious torment. So you start to see how Christianity is being hijacked, and these folks are leading tens of thousands astray. Well, it gets worse. America and the world will witness not just a pop star, but a prominent Christian take the stage at NRG Stadium on Sunday. The prophet and pastor will lead us all in worship. It may not look like your grandparents' church service, but her values do reflect those of Jesus Christ. There's only three men that I must serve my whole life, she sings on the song, You and I. It's my daddy and Nebraska and Jesus Christ. Speaking about her dad, though, in January 2010, Gaga told Elle magazine, I'm married to my dad. And that September, she told Vanity Fair, I'm happier than I've ever been. I've been in my father's arms for two weeks, wishing him a happy Father's Day. Does this seem like a normal, father-daughter loving relationship? Or does this look more like the sick works of pedophilic fathers that sell their children to this industry? Now let me say this, we should pray for Gaga that she truly finds Christ and ditches this facade. However, that by no means lets us escape our duty of calling out her satanic practices which are leading millions astray. Don't let these people reach the minds of your family and friends, for time is getting short. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until the next one, I'll see you later.